Hello and welcome back to coverage here at GP Montreal. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, where we have the quarterfinals all said. Michael Van Vals playing against Alec Watt. Alex Watt, excuse me. And uh, they're all set to go. Those uh, archetypes are not correct. Michael is on Boros, and you're going to see him lead things off here with a Skyline Scout on the other side of the battlefield. <coughs> we did get a chance to see that he's just playing straight up Is It? So not blue, black, green, but just blue, red. And I'm curious to see how this matchup plays out. If I had to guess, I would say that the uh, the Boros player is favored here. His deck looked a little more consistent, a little more clean. But the top end for Alex Watt, way more powerful. He has Niv-Mizzet Brune in his deck. Yeah, and Alex has been drafting these Is It decks throughout the course of the weekend. I mean, we watched him in the first draft. He was in pod one, and he was the player who emerged 3-0 there uh, with a really nice Is It deck. I watched him play his matches. He played well. Uh, here he is. That deck gave him enough success that here he is in the top eight doing the same thing. Play one way. Jeez, what a start here from Michael Van Vals. He can send all these creatures into the air, representing six points of power on the following turn, thanks to the Mentor ability on that patrol. Alex kind of fallen far behind. He needs to uh, get his way back into this game somehow. That, that is an extraordinarily difficult start to deal with. And this is not the answer. Erratic Cyclops, good card. Very, very strong in the Izzet deck can absolutely close out the game and even shore up the ground a little bit as far as blockers goes with that eight toughness. But as you mentioned a second ago, ground game, not the problem here. When Michael Van Vals attacks, all of his creatures can have flying. Yeah. And he's just going to be smashing him in the air. He's going to get a trigger from Parhelion Patrol on its mentor ability. Yowza. Oh, my goodness. And he's going to add a Skyline Legionnaire to the squad as well. Yeah, this is a ton of power coming in. So Alex Watt already going to fall to nine here. <laughs> <laughs> and he's had plays. You know, he, he, he played a two. He played a four. He's got his guild gates. He just has not been able to interact. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, audience, don't go get a glass of water right now because this one could be over very quickly. Michael Van Vals, he came to fight. Is this thing over? Look at that. look at the look on Alex's face. He's just like, what am I supposed to do? I mean, they all fly. You get, sometimes you get two, three. Look at that. He just scooped him up. He couldn't even win. And a super fast game one win for Michael Van Vals with the perfect curve out producing four evasive threats, none of which Alex would deal with. Yeah, Michael Van Vals, a much different deck that we saw him reach the top eight with. We just... Watch him battling with a pair of Underrealm Lich and a Dream Eater. Uh, super controlling deck full of Mythic Rares and great removal spells. And here he is in the top eight with, you know, like I said, one of the better Burrows decks I've seen throughout the course of the weekend. Wow. Alex's deck is pretty stacked, though. I'm looking through. Murmuring Mystic. We Niv Mizzet. We love that one. Yeah. We obviously love that one. Everybody loves that one. Mm -hmm. Looking here for uh, sideboard options. Take a look at what Michael's working with here. How good of a draw was that from him? You know what? I mean, it was obviously great, but I'm, I'm seeing, like, relative to his average draw. <laughs> yeah, his I deck mean, just does this. Look at that deck. Yeah, like, Patrol is bottom of the barrel in terms of four drops for him. Uh, Venerate Loxodon is really, like, top in terms of power level for him. He has a Conclave Tribunal. Uh, great answer to Niv Mizzet. Luminous Bonds lets him attack past it on the turn it comes into play without too much fuss. I think that. Uh, yeah, one of the reasons why Burroughs has not been overperforming over the course of this weekend is I feel like it's been overdrafted. You know, when I've been walking over, looking around at tables while people have been drafting, when I've been watching drafts, it seems like there are a lot of people who wanted to be on this deck. And. Uh, you know, one of the most important things in a set like this is to make sure that the people around you aren't trying to do the same thing that you're doing. Mm. Uh, we've seen the blue decks be really successful, especially in the early drafts where I think people, it's early in a format, they want to be aggressive. They don't want to take the risk of having to put together the controlling deck that needs to have the right answers for the right situation. Uh, now we're in the top eight. These people know that the blue decks are capable of victory. Uh, perhaps Michael Van Vals, he thought to himself, 
this is it. This is the time to draft the Burrow stack that's been overdrafted in the previous two drafts this weekend. Yeah, it does feel like he's really found his lane in the last two drafts because this one, this deck is just super soft. I mean, look at that mana base, 6-8 with two gates in there, too. He's just never not able to cast his spells. Uh, you it's know, a 16 any, lander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he does curve out at Inescapable Blaze, but Venerated Loxodon has Convoke. So mm -hmm. he can actually get that down without an inescapable blaze. You know, if he casts that, he figures he's probably just winning the game off it anyway. Floods out a little. But boy, what a streamlined deck for him. And you know, the last round, the draft that, that got him into the top eight, his deck was completely bonkers there too. Remember, he had Find Finality, two Underrealm Lich in that deck. He was yeah. going Tree Meter. Yep. I think he had double uh, status statue. He did. Uh, just a price of fame. Yeah. So he just went off. Now on the other side, again, we see that he does, in fact, have the tools to stay alive here. He really does, right? That Fresh Face Recruit was one of his worst cards in this matchup. You know, the Crater Maker can take out a threat on the other side, like even something pretty good, you know, like a Sky Knight Legionnaire. He's got Electrostatic Field. Okay, fine, it's not great, but it does block. Passwall Adept's a pretty good blocker down on the ground. And he even has early interaction with cards like Unexplained Dis Disappearance. And then look at those threes. Beacon Bolt, that does really well against Boros. It often kills their threats, right? Direct Current is insane against Boros. Now, let's not get too excited. He's running some clunkers in there, right? The Is It Lockets are a little slow against Boros. The Sonic Assault, he has two of those. You can use him defensively, but, mm, you know, not necessarily yeah. what you want there either. Having, having Sonic Assault in your deck on the draw against a Burrow deck this aggressive is probably not where Alex wants to be. I imagine if he has additional options, he may be wanting to sideboard them out. Um, other things in Alex's deck that he's probably not thrilled with. Devious Cover-Up, not the best card in this type of matchup. Taking a look at the sideboard here, by the way, for Alex Watt. He has a Deafening Clarion in his sideboard. Ooh, we'll be seeing that. Yeah, I, I imagine that uh, he's going to be asking for for a few islands here. Oh, he, he even has a pair of Burroughs Guild Gates, so this is just an easy splash. Well, I mean, he can just pay the red part. The <coughs> yeah, he, he's he's going to be able to bring in all of those things, and then hopefully for him set up a situation where Michael has a curve out and gets his confidence up about committing to the board, and then has them all wiped away. That's kind of what he's dreaming for. Of course. We also haven't talked about the elephant in the room, Niv-Mizzet, right? I mean, if he can just simply stick Niv-Mizzet on any type of remotely stable board state, he's going to be in good shape there, too. Though Conclave Tribunal is an excellent answer. Really is. All right, well, let's see what he can do. Oh, this time, Michael even has the one drop. Okay, he's got the electrostatic field. That's at least something to do in the early stages, even if it's not an amazing blocker. Hawk going to do a good job of uh, mitigating the triggered ability on that field. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the old one-two punch here for Michael Van Vals. This could be very bad for Alex Watt. We know that he has uh, Sinister Sabotage in his deck. Could we pass on the turn with that up? Could just be waiting with uh, Sure Strike, planning to ambush 2-1. It's like Michael's just going to attack with both creatures, prompting a block here from Alex. And Alex is going to do the defensive Sure Strike here to try to take down, well, one of the more mediocre cards from Michael anyway, Skyline Scout, but it did get the job done, it looks like. And there's a Rock Charger, so a much bigger problem, though one that Sure Strike would not have solved for him anyway. And at the moment, it's still just one additional power on the board. It doesn't actually change anything as far as how much damage Michael can get, get, can get through. So a little bit of breathing room here for Alex, but that's a scary, that's a scary beginnings on the other side of the board there for Michael Van Vals. 
and you also have to be a little more frustrated players. that you have electrostatic field, which matches up so poorly against all the flying on the other side of the yeah, table. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't really do what you want to do anyway. It's it's the best thing about it is that it's something to do in the early game that's not completely irrelevant, but that's not exactly a glowing review, <laughs> especially given how the first game played out with virtually all evasive threats from Michael Van Vals, and he's trying to continue that as well by playing Sky Knight Legionnaire this turn, but Alex does have Sinister Sabotage, so he's going to counter it. Still taking two damage, though, down to 16. And yeah, Michael Van Vals this game went 1-2-3-3, three, three, mm -hmm. and uh, Alex doing a much better job of hanging on this time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael has yet to augment any of his creatures, so, you know, we were talking earlier, the healer's hawk just on its own. Okay, it's going to peck in for some damage. It's not going to be zero, but it's not the type of thing that's going to just win the game outright. It really needs to get a counter on it or get something going to make it uh, a lot scarier from Alex's perspective. Because if Alex gets enough time here, wow, he's got a capture sphere and he just doesn't use it. Yeah, hoping to uh, get a four drop. Yeah, maybe a true fire captain or something along those lines. Yeah. Wow, another Rock Charger boy. This deck is just completely insane. He's going to have to use a Capture Sphere now, right? Just just to start locking down Rock Chargers. Just for the sake of efficiency? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. He has Direct Current in his hand as well. He can use that to kill the Healer's Hawk if he'd like. He may be hesitant to do so, fearing a card like True Heart or something like that. Yeah, we know that Michael Van Vals has access to that post-board. And we're not going to see Direct Current thus yet. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. We are going to see it. All right, he's got both the Is It Locket and the land that he needed to be able to cast Direct Current this turn, and he's going to kill the Healer's Hawk, and that works. So Alex Watt, he is controlling this board. Did he get his trigger there on the... Yeah, he might not have. Anyway, uh, this is a problem. It's Venerated Loxodon. Even in this position where it really didn't do maximum... It still does so much. It still produced five points of power for four mana. Uh, the it, fact and and is, without is, five lands, by the yeah. way. <laughs> and uh, for what it's worth, now there's six points of attacking power in the air. Uh, oh, no. Barging Sergeant here for Alex Watt? Where did that come from? I'm surprised Alex didn't just swing there, right? I mean, he'd be happy if Michael took the trade, and I don't foresee a world in which he's going to get an opportunity to block. Yeah, that, I think that was a, a spot where Alex really wanted to just attack. The Rock Charger is looking down at the Venerated locks and locks it on and says, do you want to ride? And here is another flyer. Boy, the second Sky Knight Legionnaire. This deck by Mac Michael Van Vals is absurd. The hits keep coming every turn. He keeps on playing threats that Alex really has to deal with. And look at the clock. He's at six. He's dead next turn. Really, the heat has been turned up. This is what you dream of when you're drafting Boros. A little awkward here for Alex Watt. It's tough to splash for Deafening Clarion when you're trying to cast Niv Mizzet as well. You really do need to be able to get to the latest part of the game to make that work. Now, he does have Direct Current in his graveyard that he could use to kill the uh, Sky Knight Legionnaire. But unfortunately for him, that would leave him dead, so he needs something else. Yeah. More than anything, he needs an answer to the Rock Charger so right. that he could eventually trade with the Sergeant, but you know, it looks like he's just dead on board. He's going to play Deafening Clarion, but that does not get rid of the Rock Charger. It only gets rid of the card he could have killed anyway. And he's going to finish off the... Uh, he's actually going to go for the Venerated Loxodon here now with Direct Current. So he does get Michael Van Vals down to just two power on the board. He's not able to engineer a board where he can gain too much life, though I guess that... Uh, that field did do the one damage and had lifelink, apparently, so... Yeah. Is that A true? cool little interaction, yeah. Uh, the field did do damage. The field did have lifelink, thanks to Deafening Clarion choosing both modes, so mm -hmm. Alex... And just to be clear, that was the trigger from the direct current. 
Mm -hmm. not the deafening clearing itself because that is a cast trigger. So has Alex Watts stabilized this board? It's starting to feel like no. Michael Van Vels attacks for two and then throws direct current directly upstairs and says, Alex, I'm killing you next turn unless you find some way to deal with this rock charger. Now, did he discard a Sonic Assault, though? He did. So he at least has a way to okay. buy himself one turn here by tapping down this Rock Charger. That's not an ideal way to deal with the situation. Well, and he actually found a way right there in his hand as well. Unexplained Disappearance, even better, because that's going to get him the ability to uh, get through a little bit of his library thanks to Surveil. And it's a land going into the bin. But there we go. Rock Charger plus Boros Challenger says, I've got Lethal coming up shortly. Alex looks at the top card of his library. Are we done here? Well, Alex can at least, again, uh, use his, uh, his Sonic Assault to yeah. uh, tap down that Rock Charger. And then he has a blocker for the Burrows Challenger. We're almost done. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, not an ideal situation, but it is a way to, you know, hang Get a draw on step, yep. Just for a little bit. I wonder what his outs are at this point. I guess... Land plus Niv Mizzet. Ooh, Beacon Bolt. That's a nice draw. Yeah, that'll do. He can't actually jumpstart it at this point, but he doesn't need to to stay alive. This is precarious, but Alex Watt is hanging on. Wow. It's got to be terrifying, though. You're at three. Oh, Your yeah. opponent has direct current in their graveyard. You know that their deck is full of different stuff. I think they probably have each other's deck list, so he probably knows about the inescapable blaze in Michael Van Fall's deck list. Oof. Yeah, this is just so brutal here for Alex. He just cannot buy an inch of wiggle room. Now he's back down to one, and he's dead if Michael gets to untap. Yeah, so. And that's going to do it. Michael Van Vals delivers the beatdown with Boros dispatching of Alex Watt, who's going to have to settle for a top eight finish and, uh, and an appearance at the Pro Tour. So great run by him. But you can tell he's a little unhappy. Looked over his buddies and said, nah, we didn't get there. But I'll tell you what. When Alex Watt looks at this at the deck list that Michael Van Vallis is bringing to the table, he's going to say, how did I even have a chance to beat this ever? Because Alex's deck is, is a little disheveled, you know, for an Izzet deck. It has some nice peaks to it. But that Boros deck that we saw on the other side of the table was just a streamlined masterpiece and really difficult to beat a deck with that level of power and that level of consistency. So, moving on. Isaac Krut, he's playing against Martin Eric Gauthier. And they're still in game one. Those two games went awful fast. It's two. Oh, it is game two. Okay, yeah. it just got updated for us. <laughs> but this one could be over quite quickly here. There's a, is that a rhizome lurcher there? It's huge. But Isaac is doing quite well himself. Look at the flying force he has assembled on the other side. A Night Vale Predator and a City Watch Sphinx. And he can make them unblockable with the pass wall adept. And it looks like Martin just has a pair of lands left in hand also. Oh, he might be done here. He might be done here. This is Martin's second top eight. He actually top eighted right here in Montreal three years ago in 2015. It's an attack for eight. That's presenting lethal on the, the next turn. And that's going to do it. Three lands in hand for Martin. He's got to extend it. And Isaac Root with Demir, a little bit of a splashy splash for Red there, is going to advance to the semifinals. So they're dropping quickly here in our quarterfinal matches. But uh, good stuff. Boy, I, I got to say, I don't know who's going to be able to sit across from Michael Van Vals and beat that Boros deck. I mean, I don't think that Boros deck has, like, terrible matchups. Yeah, I mean, they're... They you know, Alex drew Deafening Clarion. He just drew it too late. He was up against two four toughness things. Venerated Loxodon is just a really, really powerful magic card. And uh, had Venerated Loxodon not been part of the equation there, that Deafening Clarion probably could have got Alex there. Hmm? We got a commercial ready. All right. So we've got a, a short break lined up for you here. Uh, when we come back, though, we'll have more 
top eight magic for you here from uh, Montreal. Don't you go anywhere.